Great, so let's get started. So welcome everyone to the third of my lecture series, 2023 Conversations, which is a series to help share with you some of our, the student experiences of our great ambassadors here at King's College from both medicine and dentistry courses. So far, we've seen two first year students, so Alavi and Alessia, and if you haven't seen those recordings I'd encourage you to do so because they have literally just got into med and dental school so it's really good to see their perspective and how they've moved on from sixth form to now study in medicine dentistry but we're going to move a bit further along in the journey now uh, with my guest today Eliana so Eliana could you introduce yourself your year of study um, where you studied uh, what school you went to and sort of what area you're from as well Yep. Okay. Um, hi, everybody. I'm Eliana, and um, I'm a third year medical student, um, and I study on the EMDP, so the Extended Medical Degree Programme at King's, and I'm in my fourth year of that. Um, I went to school in Croydon. I went to a Harris, I went to Harris Academy South Norwood. Um, I still live in Croydon now, as I commute to, to uni, and I have done since first year. Um, I studied uh, biology, chemistry and geography back when I was doing my A-levels. Um, yeah, I don't know if there was anything else you said. No, but... perfect. Thank you. And uh, yeah, I'm glad you said your A-levels as well, actually, because it's often a question we always get um, in the lectures. People always ask, what A-levels did you study? So thank you for covering that. And I should add as well, Eliana was on Medview back in the day as well. So this was even before I was at King's. Eliana was at Medview when it was running, which is essentially another version of K+. Uh, now we just have a bigger K+, program, so don't email me about Medview because it's not currently going ahead, but K+, is, and it's bigger and better than ever. So Eliana, just to get us started, could you tell me what your day-to-day -day life is as a third-year medical student at King's? Yeah. Um, day-to-day life is quite varied when you're in your third year. Um, so I guess I could typically do what a week is like. That might be a bit better. So, um, we have a bit more placement than we do in our first year. So we have two days of hospital placement. Um, so for me, this is Monday and Thursday. So, um, yeah, on a Monday, we'll go in for around like nine. And the time that you stay till really does depend on the like area of the hospital that you're in. So sometimes you might go at three, sometimes you might have to stay till five. Um, and it, yeah, it's pretty much the same on a Thursday as well. Um, and then Tuesdays we'll have um, mental health placement or we'll have mental health teaching. So it alternates. Um, so for me this week, um, I had a mental health teaching uh, well actually I didn't have it because I had another workshop going on but usually I'll have mental health teaching and mental health placement um, will either be in a hospital or community setting um, and so I've recently moved to my community placement actually because I had my hospital um, one for half the year community for the other half. Wednesdays we have a module which we're coming to the end of um, it's about being a teacher as a doctor mm -hmm. um so we're just about to put an essay in on Monday for that um and Fridays we had our uh, scholarly project which is like a research project that we had to pick um and then we've just finished that actually before Christmas just finished it then um so we actually have Fridays pre now um I don't know if that's going to last for the rest of the year, but yeah, typically that's that's how my days are in third year of medical school. So that scholarly project, just so I'm clear, so I'm also aware of the student selected component. So yeah. you do that. Have you done that already? Is that last year, the SSC? And then this year you do a scholarly project on that Friday. Yeah, that's right. So last year for me, um, my SSC was um, in asthma. Um, and children and it was like a teaching program um and you do that in second year and then you do your scholarly project in your third year um and both of them have like um like some sort of engagement component and then an assessment which is like an essay usually 
Mm. Um, yeah, so that's that's how it works. With that. And the scholarly component uh, of scholarly project, what, what did you study for that over the course of autumn and winter? Yeah, so my scholarly project was on liver disease and puberty mm. and whether liver disease can um, basically like slow development in that way. Um, so we're actually still going to continue to collect data because we, we didn't get very much. We had to go into clinics and we'd basically decided to build on like existing um, research that they did last year. So but they got a bit of like skewed data. So we decided to redevelop the questionnaire, take that into clinics. We didn't get very many in our sample size. So now what we're going to try and do is get some more so we can actually do something with the research and maybe like get it published. I don't know. Amazing. Cool to do some statistical magic, hopefully, when you get your bigger sample size. Because yeah. um, that's always a challenge, right, with anything like this, is finding enough people that meet those requirements is uh when you come to it's quite interesting because i don't know much about this i know a bit more about the ssc partly because me and kate ran one lot one year is the scholarly project do you did you select that as something you wanted to do what did you select like a preference in terms of oh that's what i want to do on liver disease or yeah how does that work yeah so with both the ssc and the scholarly project you basically preference what you want um you get like six to ten preferences I can't remember exactly um and for me I got my second choice actually for both of them so Mm. um yeah and I picked things that were kind of like pediatric related because at the moment that's something that I'm interested in um and yeah hopefully you get one of your preferences um but most people do get one of their preferences so nice I think top two out of 10 isn't too bad, actually, if you think you've got your second one. In terms of, like, so reflecting on your week then, that is quite a packed schedule, right? So you've got essentially potentially three days on placement uh, and then two days doing more academic work. Um, I know a bit about the teacher as uh, medic as teacher project, because that's with Dr. Sands, who we've done some work with in the past. And on, yeah, Friday, which is now free, so you've got that day to obviously catch up with academic work in terms of the mental health work uh mental health placement so i take it so i guess i've got two one really quick question and then a second follow-up question so the first quick question so that alternates each week in terms of whether you're on placement or not and secondly is that the first time you've really looked at mental health and in detail and if so like how have you found studying that at medical school yeah, so you're right, it does alternate. So um, next week I'll be at mental health placement again. Um, so I was at Bethlehem Royal Hospital for a, just just a little under six months, but obviously going every other week, we're not there that long. Um, and then now I'm at a community placement in, it's near Canada Water. Um, it's like a community mental health centre. It's kind of like a GP, but just for mental health. Yeah. Um and um yeah so how how, did I have any other like experience or exposure to this topic before um we did a little bit in 1A so in our first year of EMDP we had a bit of um I wouldn't say it was a module or anything but we did have a look at mental health we had two patient educators come in um who both had schizophrenia um come talk to us so that was my first time I say meeting a patient that had um a mental health condition um and on that scale as well um we basically did a piece of artwork related to their mental health condition which Mm -hmm. was a really weird thing to do in medical school but that's my first like introduction to anything of that sort um and actually we've had quite a few patient educator session since and we've actually seen these patients again like three years later and they've actually remembered us um wow. yeah but um going into the hospital was my first like real exposure to it um to be honest I actually didn't want to go okay <laughs> go to the placement because I guess it's just going into the unknown um mm-hmm. I knew that obviously in a hospital 
they're going to be the most ill patients and I just didn't really know what to expect because I've never been exposed to that before Mm. um so yeah obviously I did go because it's part of my training but I was quite reluctant um but honestly from the first day what I did notice about this particular specialty was that like the doctors are so nice they have to be because like dealing with people who um have mental illness like there has to be a different level of emotion and just there's just a difference is what I noticed so it was actually quite easy to fit in to the team and um I actually was really disappointed when I was leaving because we didn't know we were leaving as early as we were they said we were changing our placements a bit later then we ended up changing it sooner um but yeah definitely learned a lot from that um and yeah I just really found it beneficial and now I'm on my community placement it's I was a lot more confident going into that because now I had some sort of exposure Mm. to like mental illness and um uh, patients who are suffering from mental illness but then once again this has been quite different because you're seeing patients who are more like long term mm. um it's all about like how they're managed in the community how we can keep them out of hospital keep them from getting to a point of crisis um keeping them stable so it's it's interesting because it's like the flip side of it whereas in the hospital it's like how can we get these patients out how can we get them back into the community um, I see. Yeah. So it's like managing the condition in a sense, more so like, yeah. and can you tell me what it's like in terms of your role as a medical student, say whether that's at the placement before or at the community placement now? So what, what does it look like to be a medical student there in terms of, I guess, your role um, as a medical student? Yeah, so for me, um, I'd say at the hospital, um, it was a mostly observational role. Um, because we didn't know all that much um, and again we had we kind of have to get comfortable in that environment mm-hmm. before you can do so much but um, we typically would join the ward round because every Tuesday that I would go there'd be a ward round from like 10 o'clock all the way up until like 3 30 so that would take up most of the day so the doctors are just speaking to the patients each patient has an appointment comes to see the doctor um, and that was really interesting because you got to see like like half the patients on the ward um, each time that you went because they had an appointment. Um, and then as it got towards the end of the placement, we got a bit more confident. You're in a partner as well, I should say, you're not by yourself. Mm. Uh, that also makes things easier. Um, we are encouraged to, and actually it's part of our portfolio, we have to take histories from the patients and um, find out a little bit more about their conditions. Um, and we also have to do psychiatric assessments as well um so what that looked like for me was as we got a bit more comfortable and confident in the setting we sat down with a couple patients and spoke to them for like an hour about their whole like mental health history um and now I'm at my community placement um it's a lot more of that like I'm gonna I've noticed that it's gonna be a lot more hands-on than the last placement because the way that they see patients is different it's obviously not a hospital setting so I can actually um with my partner see some patients myself before um the doctor sees them and I think the doctor's going to book us in to do that next time as well so and your partner is a fellow medical student or another professional yeah she is a um, medical student also in the same year as me on EMDP actually so it's always the same person as well so you always sort of have that same sort of continuity in terms of when you go you know you've got you and your same partner doing your responsibilities essentially yeah so for this placement it's the same so for um the hospital placement same person throughout and we switched together so we're still on the same um placement for community but in the hospital like general hospital um typically you could be you're with a group of people and then you're in pairs maybe in that group or sometimes you might have things by yourself um but yeah that can change and be a lot more varied okay can you tell me what I mean it's super interesting what you're doing because like you say it's it is observational primarily right because you're still learning a lot you're still quite early on in a way you still got a couple of years left for your degree 
but you're also you know talking to these patients getting their history finding out more about their condition like how does it feel talking to a patient um in particular whether that's at the hospital or the community setting in regards to mental health i can imagine it being quite intense right of like or how, how does it feel because it must be quite intimate as well talking about some of those struggles um yeah yeah i wouldn't say it's easy um mm. i think it does a lot of it does come with practice because you have to ask quite difficult questions some of the history is okay like it's it's quite similar to a normal history um in which you're asking about like the presenting complaint um you're asking about past medical history um drug history family history all of mm. those kind of things but then you've got the added like psychiatric history so you have to find out about like um whether the patients have had previous admissions why they had those admissions um probably the hardest part to ask about is risk assessment so you have to just see if they if maybe they're at harm to themselves or others mm. um that can be quite hard and that's something that is easy to avoid going into those questions because like you don't really know what the response is going to be but it's something I've realized we can practice just by doing like scenarios with each other um and I think once you realize like how to answer how to ask those questions and you kind of come to a way that you're going to ask those questions in a sensitive manner um it becomes easier because at first asking someone questions to do that is just not something natural that you would usually say so it's a lot mm. of it's practice I think yeah no I think that's really interesting and I'm glad you um pointed that out in a sense that you can like scenarios you can you can practice with each other can't you beforehand it's not you have to entirely just learn it on placement you can role play essentially with your with your fellow medics in terms of because you talked about that the placement of the hospital ending what was that sort of big takeaway from from that experience for you do you think that's a good question um hmm I think biggest takeaway is just how it all works to be honest because I guess it's a while they just didn't know about like obviously I'd heard about there being a thing as psychiatric hospitals um but I just didn't know anything about it I didn't know like the process like why people would end up there what the aim is whilst they're there how they would get out like just the whole thing was just the way the system works I guess um mm -hmm. um and basically the role of that hospital in being just to like treat people for a short term and get them to like a stable point and then get them into the community um yeah I think I'll just take away that just the fact that it exists and the way that it works because I really didn't have a lot of knowledge on it at all before I went no I think that's a great it's a really great point Eliana because it makes me think if anything with mental health even though there's more awareness now I think there's still quite a lot of I guess I'm trying to think of the right word but like sort of mystique or like false information about what these hospitals are because there's so much like history about like bedlam like think about how that word and the connotations it has or you know when you think about pop culture like the joker and like this that sort of uh, that sort of not good that sort of negative connotations and stuff associated with it so I can imagine it must be quite interesting as a medical student to actually just learn about how 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 mental health is actually you know worked with with patients right getting away from some of these like probably not positive um connotations uh, I wonder as well if that sort of those kind of things contribute to that sort of going into that environment and sort of feeling a bit like oh I don't know what what to expect you know um because of sort of pop culture right um so reflecting about your other placement and it's really I'm spending a lot of time on this because the other two we obviously didn't really cover that so much because they're just in their first year but so the Monday and the Thursday mm. so what are you up to at the moment in that regard and how are you finding that yeah so I've just started a new we call them blocks so a block is basically okay. a module so I've just started a new block a couple of weeks ago it's called CMS which stands for um cognition movement and sensors it's basically mm. a neurology block um so yeah this this block we haven't done neurology since 
first year like Kwane we did a bit of neuroanatomy um and even then it was during covid so it was a bit like we were teaching ourselves some of that um so for me it was quite uh I guess it's quite new still to me even in third year learning um this stuff uh, there's a lot to learn it's very interesting though that's what I have found um and I didn't I feel like yeah it's definitely an area that I would consider for the future um I guess because like it's the brain like I just when you think about it like all these different um things that we look for like some, sometimes we're looking for like um we're examining the limbs we're examining the upper limb lower limbs your arms and your legs and we're looking for different things and different things in your arms and legs can tell you certain things about lesions in the brain I just find that really like mind-blowing because it's like you're seeing these outward things on different parts of the body and then it points to like there being some sort of like brain pathology so I found that quite interesting um so for this particular block we've also got the eye as well involved mm -hmm. so we're doing ophthalmology um and I'm basically at I didn't I don't think I said which hospitals I'm at I'm at um Queen Elizabeth Hospital at the moment in Woolwich and okay. uh, I'm also at Lewisham for this block I'm at Queen Elizabeth but for other blocks I've been at Lewisham um and that's over the past two years because the hospitals kind of come in in two year blocks um yeah so we actually had an ophthalmology um week and that was actually at a different hospital it was at King's um because they have like a more specialist eye um things so we went to ophthalmology clinics had an ophthalmology day um mm. and that was really interesting as well and I thought I didn't like anything to do with the eyes because of how delicate they are and I was like I don't want to do anything to do with the eyes but then yeah even that just I had a new perspective on that when I went to the clinic so I was just like wow like the eyes are so small and I was kind of just writing them off as an area that I would go into. So I was like, oh, there's such a small part of the body. There's so much more I could do. But if people don't have their eyes, they can't see. And it was like, wow, <laughs> obviously I knew that. But <laughs> um, yeah, just how important that specialty is. I just, yeah, I realized it when I went. So it's been interesting. It's not been many weeks of it yet. Um, but yeah. We're just trying to get to grips with the different examinations for um, neurology and like how to take a neurology history and all those kind of things. Oh, that's really that's that's really really cool and uh, it's yeah interesting to hear how you know you're discovering my impression so far like each of these subject areas you've discovered whether that's mental health as a whole or the neurology or ophthalmology just how each one you sort of like oh I wasn't sure about it before and now it's really interesting because um I suppose it's just discovering all the nuance and and the implications is uh really fascinating with the um I was gonna ask with the these placements so like when you're doing say the ophthalmology one or or the neurology one is it an element then of essentially it's kind of like learning on the job where you're kind of learning through seeing what the doctors do and your kind of examinations and so as you're learning now I assume you're having to look back at kind of like your 1A sort of textbook sort of theory but then having to put it back into like practice in terms of what this actual knowledge of like neurons in the brain actually relates to in terms of treatment of a patient. Yeah definitely it's what I'm finding is that as we go up medical school the way in which we learn is a lot different so before it was quite lecture heavy mm. um, now we still do get lectures but the, the difference is before our lectures were given by the university and the university only but now because we spend quite a lot of our time on placement the, it's the hospital's um role to give us that teaching oh, so okay. we'll have teaching from different doctors um it really does vary depending on which block you're doing um this specific block usually has lectures in the morning you can optionally join and they're recorded sometimes mm. um and they'll be online and they're for all of the students in my year group who are doing this block not just the ones at my hospital um so we do get some yeah. refreshers in that sense of like some things that we might have covered earlier um 
and we get lectures on like some conditions and stuff because obviously now we're trying to move to like a more clinical focus um but the way that they I've heard them say it before is like in your first few years you're trying you're guessing the foundations you're doing a lot of anatomy like physiology it's a more scientific base and then as you get to your second year third year at King's it's more like clinical you're learning kind of switches to being more clinical you're trying to like take as many histories as possible um for those of you who don't know what history is it's like um when you go to the doctor say you go to a GP they've never seen you before they want to find out what's wrong with you they'll talk to you they'll ask you um why you've come in all different things to do with like what you might have had before the medication you're on all of that and there's a certain structure for it and so mm. basically encouraged to take a lot of histories um, to do a lot of examinations because there's quite a lot of examinations we need to know for the different systems in the body um, and I'd say those are the main things at this point in time even um, and we have clinical skills we need to get signed off as well um, and yeah I just like I guess learning as much as we can and then as we move on to like fourth and fifth year the focus kind of moves off like the like examination history taking side of things more onto like management like okay how do we manage this patient um we do cover some of that now but then I feel like from what I've heard the focus has shifted even more to that side of things um and that's kind of how it goes so I'm in that stage where we're doing a lot of like trying to get histories examinations down we've got our OSCEs coming up in May which are examinations which assess our um ability to take histories ability to do clinical examination ability to do clinical skills communication all of that so um we've actually started practicing I actually went this morning to do some practice for that as well so yeah and how was that it was good we did um the cranial nerves uh which are nerves in the face and head um so yeah it was good because that's another good thing you can book um clinical skills rooms um in one of the buildings at king's and then you can just go they have like all the equipment and stuff that you might need i have a couch yeah so it's a really good um opportunity to actually get some practice in and in terms of uh, just to explain actually because i think you've done it really well so far liana so i appreciate it um in terms of just terminology again like an oski what exactly is that yeah so i think it stands for Oh, actually I'm not sure it stands for some sort of clinical exam- clinical examination must be the final clinical bit. something look it up guys it's OSCE. close enough yeah <laughs> OSC yeah OSCE yeah yeah um and um it's basically yeah just it's completely different to your written exam so for us in medical school we'll have um multiple choice exams um, that's like our written exams hmm. um, and then once we get to second year when we've started going into hospitals they then like to assess the clinical element of medicine because obviously that is a big part of medicine hmm. um, and so that basically covers um, a lot about like communication with patients making sure that we um, to be honest it can be so varied like we need to know respiratory exam so lung exam heart exam um neurology exams um we need to know there's actually so many um Mm. clinical skills like blood taking blood pressure um catheterization um communication like how to discuss test results with a patient maybe Mm. um interpretation of of chest x-rays um there's actually a lot that can be covered we have like a list of everything to go through um and second year it will be less things because you haven't covered as much third year will be more things and this um OSCE exam actually counts um this year whereas last year it didn't we got like more of a practice OSCE last year yeah um and then fourth year OSCEs will be like everything I think that's our final OSCEs I think it might be fourth year um so yeah it just ups the content each time um so in sort of summary and I think we've kind of covered more or less everything 
I wanted to talk about in terms of your like current medical school experience and some relation to the first and last years, which I think is really great. In summary, then, this kind of year, this kind of middle part of medical school seems to me, if I was to summarise it, would be what's the problem? But in terms of what you're trying to learn as medical students, you're trying to figure out, okay, what is the problem with this patient? And that requires information in terms of textbook and theoretical knowledge, but even more importantly, being able to do examinations correctly and also get the information you need from the patient by having the communication skills to be able to take a good history. Would you say that's sort of accurate in terms of what that is? And then in terms of year four or five, et cetera, it'd be then how do we manage slash cure flip, fix it in a sense yeah I would, I would definitely agree with that um yeah it, it basically is that um we do cover I guess some management because we need to know it for our exams but mostly whenever I speak to doctors they're like oh um just make sure you know this like you guys should be going and doing this examination you guys should know this examination like it's all about like make sure you know how to do this examination make sure you know how to take a history those are the key things they want us to get from placement at this stage um so yeah I'd say that sums it up well and I think I mean we talked about it in terms of the mental health setting but how does it feel for yourself Eliana now like sort of at this point in your journey because I've known you for a good good few years now as an ambassador but at this point in your journey where you know you're starting to do examinations you're starting to like take histories from patients like how does that feel for you yeah it's it's I'd say it's somewhat daunting but Mm. very exciting at the same time to see this is the kind of thing that when you go into medical school or before you go into medical school you think of yourself doing and you kind of think that oh you're going to be like going around with your stethoscope from day one but um that's not the case because obviously you have to walk before you can run um and yeah I feel like we're finally getting to those years of medical school that everyone has been waiting for since before they started um so yeah it's really exciting and the end seems like it's it's coming pretty quickly like I look back and I'm thinking I don't know where the last three years have gone um but yeah no it's really exciting actually um Sometimes there are days when you're like, you do an examination, right? Or you speak to a patient, you get a really good history and it's like, okay, yes, I'm actually, I'm doing it. So yeah, it's good, it's good. That must be yeah, quite a realisation, like when you're actually talking to a patient, you're like, oh my God, like I'm doing this, I'm, I'm being a doctor, um, which is really cool. And I love how you've said that about time, because we get this all the time, right? Where students are like, oh, it's five years, six years, seven years, whatever. And it's like, you know what, I wish I had just been at uni for a few more years, because it's great, right? Like, well, your university experience is very different in a way to a traditional degree, but still, you're a university student, and it's it's great. Like, you're learning all the time, taking in new information, making friends, meeting new people, and it's like, you know what, that time actually goes so quickly, because every year is like a discovery, right? You're always doing something else, so it's kind of totally different. So when you sort of get into a job and you're kind of doing quite, you know, you get into a routine, you know? I want to ask Eliana, I think it's quite important to cover um, before. And then I think I want to, I said to myself, I'm going to be more, more strict on time. So uh, for myself, but I could ask you lots more questions about your experience because it, it's great. It's great to hear. In terms of like social activities you're involved in on campus, and I'm curious sort of what you're involved in now and then how maybe that's changed over the years as well. Um, so yeah, could you say a bit about that? Yeah. Um so for me I feel like it's it's been quite a different experience because obviously I commute from home so I feel as though um maybe the way in which I'm socially involved at uni would be quite different to someone who's there all the time stayed in accommodation um so I feel like for my first years of uni um a lot of the time it was like joining all the society group chats seeing kind of what was going on um, for me I got involved in like the Christian societies so um, like King's Gospel Society and Christian Union um, and yeah like just that sort of thing really going to some of their events here and there um, and I feel like as I've gotten into medical school a bit further 
I haven't gone to as much things as I used to go to when I was um in my lower years and also because I commute from home I feel as though I do have like a social network also outside of university that I'm quite connected to as well Mm -hmm. so the way in which I connect socially in uni might not be as much as someone who does um who stays in accommodation um but yeah I guess that's how I would um summarize that and I think getting involved in like being an ambassador as well um has been a good thing for me socially getting to meet other ambassadors people who in other years um people younger and older um and yeah and in terms of if I could ask like about sort of like friendship groups at uni do they tend to be sort of more medics or are they from other subject areas as well like what does that look like that's a good one I think for me specifically it's more medic focused because and I think this is simply because a lot of my friends outside of uni are not medics and so I kind of have my social circle with like non-medic people outside of uni and then like in uni it's like more medic related people Uh, but what I will say is that it's very multicultural multi-faith um the people that I'm mixing with that I consider my friends and yeah I think in university you you can't escape that like you're going to meet loads of people which is a great thing and they're going to be from all different um areas and yeah so I'd say probably more medic based but very diverse in Mm. that yeah yeah Kings has a great buzz people from all over lots of different backgrounds and I'm curious Eliana just reflecting on your experience as a commuter student which is definitely interesting to reflect on because I'm sure lots of students if they're watching or part of my lectures etc are from London and obviously I want them to come to King's as well. And if they do come to King's, they probably will consider commuting because there's no point paying for accommodation. But I'm just curious for yourself, like it seems like you have like a really good network of friends outside of uni. Do you think that was partly facilitated as well because you've stayed in your home area? Do you think you would have stayed as close with those people, say if you went to uni in like Manchester, for instance, for medical school? Hopefully that doesn't pry too much. I'm just kind of curious like what your reflections are on that. Um, no, that's interesting because no, I think yeah, maybe maybe things might have been different. Um, I had some friends who moved away actually as well. Um, and I'll say that our friendship's still the same, so maybe it wouldn't have an impact. But I think also because I got a lot more involved in my church, so there's like a young adults connect group and stuff. So, um, I've met quite a lot of people, I guess, in the last year even um there so um no, I guess not even that I've just kept the same friends I've made new friends outside of uni as well um so that is one thing I will emphasize there's definitely time for other things um as a medical student you don't have to just meet people at uni and just be in uni all the time there's definitely time for you to pursue other um avenues meet other people outside of uni as well and I, I really would encourage you to because there is a whole world out there um yeah so I imagine you can get sucked into the the medical world if like all your buddies are medical students you only go to medical student societies etc and also day-to-day you're a medical student and placement etc it sounds like you have you know quite a clear something in your life which is very much separate from that and uh yeah yeah, yeah. Um, actually I forgot to mention I'm part of pediatric society as well <laughs> and I'm oh, doing, cool. we've just started doing volunteering in uh, Lewisham Children's Hospital well it's not Children's Hospital the Children's Ward at the hospital um, it's called Bedside Fun and um, we're just going to be like playing with the kids I'm doing it tomorrow actually so that's something good um, and awesome. pediatric related as well so God, I mean it seems like a dumb question to ask because it's like why are you doing that in a sense but like in terms of it's obviously your why because it's a nice thing to do but obviously like there's a lot on your your plate like you're doing your placements etc I've got studies like is is it looking ahead to the future of being a pediatrician um creating connections or it purely is just out of the goodness of your heart and wanting to help kids um yeah what are your thoughts on that for me I think it's because I just want to get more experience with children um and yeah I just say that's literally it and obviously there is all the added things of like oh you're playing with kids like they'll enjoy it and stuff and all of that 
is obviously very rewarding as well. But I think the main driver was for me um, is just to get as much experience with children as possible because I've still not set my heart on doing that. It's just at this moment in time, that is what I am leaning towards. Um, and it is definitely the place I feel happiest in the hospital. I, I don't think anybody can be sad on a children's ward. I mean, I know there are obviously some really sick children and children dying is obviously something you have to deal with in that particular field but even sick children are running around and they're smiling and they don't know what's going on with them and so it kind of just forces you when you're in that environment to just be smiling too um and I haven't actually had many days of being in the pediatric ward I think I had like two days in last year and of like proper placement so for me doing a bit of like volunteering once a week um yeah will just give me a bit more exposure to that area interesting that's really fascinating because I can imagine working on and um, we will have a lecture um so students uh look out for that on pediatrics and Eliana you'll definitely be working that I've already got you to save the date the it's obviously I can imagine it's very much more highs and lows right because obviously if a child is sick it's definitely more a big low right but then if they get better then it's going to be elation and I really love that point you make about they have less I guess they have an awareness maybe what what's going on like maybe something's not right but whereas an adult might be like existentially aware that you know what I'm going to die or whatever or something whereas a child in a sense that makes your role as a doctor even more important because they're very much responding to how you're treating them in the moment right and the sort of what they're picking up from you in terms of signals about how they should feel um but I've never done anything like that so I don't know Um, no and I think also another thing that I've realized or that I've heard is that children recover ever so quickly so it's like it's just a lot happier in that sense children don't tend to die like that is just how life is like it's how it should be like children are not supposed to be dying but if they're ill they tend to get better and there's actually a lot less children dying than there would be like in the hospital of adults dying so it actually is a lot happier in that sense because most of your patients are recovering and recovering quickly yeah imagine if you specialize in obviously older patients um it'd be slightly different different story because that'd be like managing end of life care etc so it'd be very very different to that um but really interesting as well and I think it speaks to our students looking for work experience etc and the importance of because even you as a current medical student are sort of taking time to essentially you know do volunteering essentially in your own time to find out you know is this for me in the future and and how important that is even for you who's someone who's currently training I think that's really interesting. Um, Great, cool. So I'm going to ask my final questions now. And uh, these have been quite similar for for everyone. So I want to try and keep these similar. This isn't me trying to be like Stephen Bartlett. (laughs) I should Nikki's thing of like getting you to think of a question for the next guest. I love it when he does that. Um, So Eliana, what are you most looking forward to sort of for the remainder of the year of this um your third year on the medical degree hmm. I have to think for a moment go ahead <laughs> um I think I'm just looking forward to just being more competent I think okay. that would be what I would say um because as you get on I guess like where I am now is not where I was and where I am now is not where I will be um and you just I don't know you just look back and you see the progress you don't always see it when you're there in the moment like sometimes if you don't get something it's like it feels like the end of the world but um I think I'm just looking forward to looking back at the end of the year and seeing like the progress and just yeah just feeling even closer to it um and yeah just more competency I guess um yeah that's what I would say um and then next year I mean, I mean, you didn't ask me what I'm looking forward to next year, but oh, go ahead, yeah. we've got, um, we had to leak recently, actually on Monday, the deadline was to pick our placements for the next two years. Oh, wow. Okay. That's a very rigorous process because there's like 150 or so placement lines to pick. Wow. Um, okay. 
that took me ages to go through and you pick 20 lines of around 150 lines um and and you hope and pray that you get your one of your 20 but I mean I guess that's a conversation for another day because the way they do that is um interesting so we're saying that we'll leave, yeah. leave a cliffhanger there maybe you save that for part two what's <laughs> your number two two picks there I imagine pediatrics is one of them if that is a so, Everybody gets a pediatric. Um, Everyone does. That makes sense. Picked, but it's more about like the locations. Located. So, so where you have you put? Be placed in London, or you can be placed outside in in like South areas like Margate, like Margate yeah. Eastbourne, Hastings, well, wow. Ashford, those kind of places. Yeah. Oh. So where have you put as your top choices, like local in London? So for or... me, because I commute, I, I do want to experience some sort of like peripheral placement. So I've put two peripheral placements of, I think, around seven. I don't know. So hopefully I get minimum two peripheral placements and the rest London. So I have been in London, but not in the centre. I haven't been in any big hospitals for my placement. So I do want to experience that as well. Um, yeah. Sounds good. I love it. I, I think that's great. Oh, your comment on sort of competency before I keep, I, I was sort of chuckling to myself, Eliana, because I was thinking of your comment earlier, like, you know, the eye sees things like I realised that now. <laughs> great. That, that seems like a <laughs> good, a good starting point um, to go from. But uh, I think that speaks to hopefully what we've discussed as well throughout this in terms of, you know, now you're actually doing what you imagined you would be doing like seeing patients going around with the stethoscope doing histories and I suppose that is a huge learning curve so it must be amazing to sort of see yourself throughout this year sort of going through that journey of like you know at the start of this year you'd never taken a history on someone's mental health and now you have and now you're doing multiple times and I'm sure whenever I meet you guys and certainly you know as seeing you progress through the years I'm always amazed that like the communication skills of our ambassadors and how they speak and the professionalism and I think that comes with you know what you guys are doing day to day like these conversations you have discussing like really tough stuff and uh you know seeing ambassadors like Shaz and Melissa who've just graduated it's like wow you know these guys are going to be great doctors and it's obviously going to be the same for you so it's really cool um from my point of view to see that journey as well which is lovely so my final question um this one is maybe a bit of a detail from what we talked about we typically with the first years it was a bit more sort of sort of relevant because it was closer to what they did but still I want to ask you if you uh if you were able to sort of go back in time to when you were a year 12 student so we're thinking about you applying now what sort of advice would you give to like year 12 Eliana now who's like thinking about in October she's going to apply for medical school um what advice would you give her um I think just um experience it I guess experience it as much as you can I know it's hard, it's easier said than done because obviously there's always going to be like certain maybe age restrictions or certain things but just I guess like seek out as many opportunities as possible um to really taste medicine at as much as you can before you get into it um that's something I did do when I was applying but I guess you can never fully you can never really mm -hmm. be sure what something's going to be like until you get there um but I would just say just yeah just seek out every opportunity that you can to find out more about medicine um find out if it's for you because if it's not for you you'll find out very soon once you get into it and I think it would be better to have a um like a, a more of an insight before you get into it about whether it is for you um before just going into it because it is a very big commitment um but if you really do want to do it it's definitely a worth it commitment um so I just say yeah seek out opportunities um get online research things early as well so you know all your deadlines um that you need for applying um yeah like just don't be afraid to apply for things as well because if you don't apply for them then you know you'll never know whether you would have got in but at least if you apply and you get rejected well you applied so 
just seek out opportunities. Great. I think that's a wonderful point to end on. So Eliana, thanks so much uh, for your time and answering all these questions on all things placement. I'm really glad we've got into detail there. And I think there's loads of uh, lovely points, lovely reflections and pieces of, pieces of advice for our students on thinking about what it's like to be in your third year of medicine at King. So yeah, thanks so much. And I wish you all the best for the remainder of the year. Thank you. Bye, everybody. I guess.